Welcome to video number four in our GBL mini course. And this video is entitled Evaluating Game-Based Learning Technologies. And one of the dangers with game-based learning technologies is you can become dazzled and hypnotized by the technology and what the technology can do. And this can drive how you use them, often without producing the useful business result that you're looking for. So let's see how we can avoid that. So before you even start to consider game-based learning and various technologies, the seven questions that I would recommend that you explore and ask yourself. The first question is, can you define the target group that this intervention is aimed for? Um, is it a cohesive group or is it uh, multiple groups? Uh, that, that's absolutely essential. Secondly, how many people are in the target group and over what period are you going to engage with them? So if it's 20 people and you're going to engage with them once, there's a certain kind of investment to support that. But if it's 2,000 people and you're going to engage with them over a 18 month period on a couple of times each, there's a different level of investment. So uh, Ultimately, it's coming down to cost per delegate. So the, the next thing question is the obvious and what are the learning objectives? What is it that you want the people to learn? Um, and what I've found is sometimes learning objectives tend to be somewhat woolly. Um, but you need to get down what it is that you want people to learn and what you want them to be able to do differently as a result of having learned this. Um, then I always try to take it a bit further to avoid the wooliness problem of the learning objectives. What are the specific skills to be developed? Can you define the skills that are needed? For example, change management, what does that involve? Um, and uh, build that up as a, as a profile of skills that need to be developed. Because often learning can get hung up on the learning when ultimately what people take away is specific skills. Now, once you know the skills you're, you're, you're looking to develop, for example, change management and influencing skills, um, then there's two other questions. Uh, the first question is, what does the average participant look like? Can you somehow profile them? For example, the skill of influencing uh, influencing a group. Can you place people on, on some sort of spectrum? And we're talking about basically thinking about light skill models. The second question, even more important, is what does great look like? And where are your top performers, the people that are exemplars of these best skills, where have they reached? And that basically gives you a gap that you're looking to address through any kind of intervention. Question six, what is the business imperative for this learning? Um, why does the business need this? Why does it need it now? What problems does it solve for the business? What costs might it save? What revenues might it uh, allow to be developed that aren't there at the minute? Why does the business need this learning? And the final question, well before you start to look at any of these lovely technologies is, what are the constraints? Uh, in the real world, we've always got constraints. There may be a budget. Uh, there may be a time constraint that people you'd really like to get them together for four one day sessions in a room but unfortunately they're only going to be able to come together for three three hour sessions over the web what are the constraints that you're working with in the real world so these questions once if you've asked these questions and discussed them and answered them well you're in a much better position to start going to the technology and not have the technology to driving your thinking so then if you are looking at specific games, I find there's another seven questions that help you position a game 
in, 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 at a high level so you can see where it fits. The first question is technology. And just to be clear, you don't need technology for games. Some games can be computer based, but there are so, some excellent board games that can be used for game based learning. If it is a computer game, is it run on a desktop or does it run on the web? Uh, does it also run on the mobile phone? Remember earlier on we talked about the importance in terms of the Gartner hype cycle of mobile learning. So you need to look at the technology involved in the game and that might well just be a document or, 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 or a board game. The second question is the game designed to be played in teams or in individuals because um, it takes you down totally different paths. Thirdly, um, as well as the game or the calculator at the middle of it, what kind of support is available off sim? For example, briefing materials and supporting role plays, because this kind of stuff makes a game much more multi-dimensional rather than two-dimensional. So that's very important. Off simulation support. What about the support for facilitators? Are facilitators part of it? How do those facilitators get trained uh, and uh, is there information that helps facilitators see things that they need to watch out for when people are playing the, the game? What about the business model? So the algorithms in the game, where did they come from? Uh, can you see them? Can you break them down? What's the history of them? Uh, who invented them? Um, just because they're in the game doesn't mean they're right. Um, there's nothing worse than having uh, people who are expert in a topic being confronted with naive algorithms in that same topic. It will only absolutely irritate them. Uh, and the sixth question is, what degree of customization is possible? There's customizing the, the game itself, but there's also customizing how the game can be used. Customizing games themselves are generally quite expensive, but a game can be used in different ways and different briefing material put with it. So what kind of customization is possible? And finally, I think we introduced this concept in the topic on lenses. Let's look at the dimensions of the game. Uh, to what extent does the game explore a topic? To what extent is the game team oriented? To what extent does the game let you see individual style or touch? And what techniques will you master by playing the game? So this gives you a way to look at, at, at specific games. Um, give you a little example here. This is a lovely little game called Space Team. It's a free game. It's played on mobile phones. People all ring into shared Wi-Fi, and it's called a collaborative shouting game. Um, so, I'm, uh, and basically, what happens is you're collectively flying a spacecraft, and individual mobile phones get a notification that something's broken, and they have to tell somebody else, and they have to fix it on their mobile phone. So, brilliant little concept, a cooperative mobile phone game. I'm going to just play a little bit of this video to try and give you a little bit of a, a sense of it. All right, sector four, heavy turbulence ahead. Okay, so that's given you a flavour of Space Team, a great little game for an icebreaker. So let's think about it. Uh, first of all, topic. There's really no topic information in this game. This isn't the way you fly a spacecraft, um, so there's no topic information. Um, in terms of team, yes, there's some stuff about team. You're building a team, you're working as a team. There's also a little bit of touch as well, where you can see the people who maybe are too slow and they take a long time to get engaged or they don't really get started at all and there's no real techniques involved so this is a, 
a very light game. But we go to the other end of a spectrum. This is an example of one of our commercial acumen games. I'm just going to give you a, a little minute's worth of the video on this. And what I'd like you to think about, I want you to apply the same analysis on those four things, the four T's to this game. XSIM is a business acumen and crisis management sim. Your goal is to successfully run Netbox, a major B2C business operating in a competitive market for a full year of four quarters. To achieve this goal, you will need to interpret different types of business indicators and understand profit and loss accounts, react effectively to dilemmas, trade-offs and unexpected changes both inside and outside the business, evolve quickly into an effective team with your colleagues as you play the sim together. Each quarter you must make five key decisions. Pricing impacts your revenues, profits and market share. Product mix. Okay, so that should give you a flavour of what that game's about. So let's do the same analysis again. And we can see this game is very heavy on the topic of running a, a real-time entertainment company. Uh, so that's, that's deep in that. It's also quite heavy on a number of techniques. For example, you can make out there a balanced scorecard. Um, also, uh, you play it in teams. So there's the possibility of lots of team interactions showing up and your individual style. So that's at the other end of the spectrum. So it's just showing you the different ways you can use the four T's to analyze a game. So uh, that's uh, all I really want to say about evaluating game-based learning technologies. You need to ask the business questions first. You need a way to assess the technologies and you need to make sure that the technology discussions are not driving what you want to do as a business. We're now going to go on to the fifth video, which is creating the business case for game-based learning.